Hi guys, welcome to Code Decode. So today we are going to cover one of the OOPs concept that is encapsulation or data hiding. When interviewer asks you about OOPs concepts, many a times it happens that we get confused within these principles. So I have already shown you a few concepts diagrammatically and today also I am going to show you this concept diagrammatically so that it is easy for you to remember and recall when you get into such situations. Say I have already shown you a few concepts, do you remember say if, if an interview asks you about inheritance, recall that animal, dog and Labrador example. If the interview asks you about aggregation and composition, just recall that car driver and car and engine example. And in case of encapsulation, which is the case here, remember this chocolate example. So let's first understand this, exa uh, this encapsulation and data hiding theoretically. And then in the next video, I'll show you how to implement encapsulation in Java world. So can you see this chocolate wrapper here? So this is nothing but a way. How do you encapsulate things here? So in Java, variables and methods or the data or the logic which runs upon this data or the methods are wrapped in a single unit called as class. So consider this chocolate as class and the content in this chocolate as the data or variables or the logic that works upon this variables or something called as methods in Java. So data and methods are actually encapsulated or actually being closed in this encapsulated class. So the way to implement encapsulation is to implement a class, but with two more things. So variables and methods are actually hidden. Hidden. Why is it hidden? Because it is inside a class. Nobody outside can see this. Only the class where it is actually being defined knows about these data and methods. They can be accessed only through objects like create an object, call a method and then with that method you can call the variables. So how do you implement it? Practically to implement it, create private variables and public methods. So then how can you do that? You can create an object of a class, say suppose dog, dog uh, Tommy equals to new dog. With that object you can call the public method and that public method does nothing but a get or set that variable in that class. So that's how you do it and why is it hidden because two different uh, objects can actually not interfere in each other's data and methods because they are encapsulated in an object or a logical entity called as class and other world also cannot uh, actually hinder your data because it is not uh, public to them they are private and they can access this data only through these methods only when you can create an object of this whole class. So this was all about encapsulation. Let's understand its advantages. So the very first advantage of encapsulation is that providing only getters or only the setters, you can make the class read only or write only. So a bit confusing for you? Don't worry. Understand that if you provide only getters or if you provide only setters, say I have removed all the getters from the methods and we have only setter. So what does setter methods do? Setters does nothing but write a value in a variable. So by providing only setters, you make the class write only. You cannot read the values which are already provided in the class for that variable. Similarly, if you make only getters, then there is no way any other outside entity or the world can write it. So it is only read only. You can only read the values of variables. You cannot modify or write them. So that is how you make the class read only or write only by making getters and setters or optionally one of them or none of them. Second advantage of encapsulation is that it provides you control over data. How does it provides a control? Because you write a logic in setters and then you can decide what is to be saved or not saved. Say for example, if you have an int variable and you have a get setter there and a getter. So in setter, what I write, if the value being set is greater than 5, then only set, else don't set it. So this is how, what I did, I put a logic in my setter method. That is how encapsulation makes an advantage for us that it gives you control over data, what is to be saved and what not. 
the third advantage is that it it is a way to achieve data hiding in java because other classes will not be able to access data through the private data members so if the data members are private nobody can access it unless they don't create an object of it they don't call the method of it and that method would actually work upon these uh, variables so the variables are basically hidden last but not the least that the standard ids for example eclipse are providing facility to generate these getters and setters very easily so in eclipse what you can do right click generate sources and in that you can uh, uh, tick mark or check tick the check boxes for what all variables do you need to create getters and setters and for those which you are not what which you are not creating the getters and setters they won't be actually being accessed by the others and they will remain very private to that particular class i'll show you all of these advantages one by one and how to actually implement encapsulation in java world in the next video so stay tuned thank you